welcome uh, this is the model 2 lecture 9 and it is on kinetics of gas solid reaction iron oxide reduction part 1 actually uh, this uh, iron oxide reduction kinetics i'll cover in two lecture in first lecture basically i'll talk about the model and uh, different rate controlling mechanism and in the second lecture we'll talk about the mixed control system and we will also solve two problems okay so this is the first lecture and what are the concept uh, uh, covered it will be basically the we'll talk about the mechanism of iron oxide reduction and then kinetic steps in king core model and the kinetics of chemical control process and gas film control process as well as uh, uh, that is the ash layer diffusion control process all types of control will basically discuss so now the there are basically uh, when if you want to make a predictive model for the iron oxide reduction uh, that there are basically two types of models uh, available basically one is called the progressive reaction model another is called the unreacted core model what is the progressive reactive model progressive reactive model basically uh, this is called the progressive reactive model what you can find in this case the uh, solid material that is being reduced okay that are porous enough that is porous and uh, the reductant gas or the reductant can easily penetrate through the solid material okay as a result what happens the reaction can take place throughout the body because the uh, material is porous and it is porous to the gas reductant gas so it can penetrate anywhere into the body so your reaction will start from the beginning throughout the body okay although truly speaking there is a reaction may not be uh, totally uniform throughout the body because the surface uh, surface reaction will be more because the reductant concentration is more at the surface but eventually the gas will penetrate inside and the reaction will take place so if you can see there is the concentration of the reduct uh, reductant this is the concentration of the uh, solid reductant okay and this is basically the radial position you can see at the surface the after some time basically this is across the time this time is increasing so after some time we can find there is a concentration concentration of the solid reactant is minimum at the surface this is and there is little higher in the core because the core is reduced little less compared to the surface but eventually the throughout the body the reaction is taking place okay so after some time you can find this is like this so both that is the core has reduced significantly as well as the surface also reduced but the surface reduction little more than that of the core but eventually the reduction is taking place after some time you can find that the reduction almost going to near to complete both near the surface as well as the core okay it, it is becoming flatter and finally it will be so this is called the uh, progressive reaction model where the reaction is taking place throughout the body because the body is porous to the reducted gas so this is one model okay but uh, this is not very uh, actual situation the real situation because in most of the cases we will find in real situation uh, after some time if you just take the body and make a cross section you will find at the center at the core of the particle there is some unreacted core so at the core of the body there is an unreacted core because the gas cannot penetrate the core so easily and most of the cases solid are very dense and it, the penetration of the gas that is the gas penetration is not that easy okay so gas basically cannot penetrate the solid body so what happens the gas react on the surface and the reaction interface move from the surface towards the core so basically progressively the reaction approach from the surface towards the core and unlike progressive model the reaction do not take place throughout the body the reaction always take place at the surface and then it progresses towards the core and this is basically that's why it is also called the topochemical model this is the name it's a name from latin word somewhere that is the topo means for surface so surface chemical reaction okay so that is the thing so you get the name topochemical model or the unreacted core model where the core with time shrink the core with time unreacted core not the unreacted core moves with a with time shrinks that you can find here 
So, initially it was the unreacted, after some time you can find this is the unreacted core and this is basically the reacted one that is ash layer, it is also called the ash layer and ash layer is usually the porous and that allows the gas through to pass through okay and the reaction always take place at this interface at this interface and after some time you can find there is the unreacted core has sink further this is the unreacted core but eventually there exists an unreacted core okay and there is this is called the ash layer and so but as we have seen pictorially it is very sharp interface interface are very sharp in a real situation that may not happen, there may be a diffuse interface, the interface may not be so sharp, one reacted core and the reacted one that is not so sharp, it may be diffused enough. But for the sake of model, because if you want to give some handy correlation, analytical expression, then I have to have a regular object and as a result regular shape, okay. So I would like to have a very sharp interface such that the model becomes, so this is and after that you can find this unreacted code has diminished and finally it will be completely diminished and this is the thing. So that is called unreacted core model or the shrinking core model because the unreacted core is shrinking with time that is why it is also called the shrinking core model. And shrinking core model some assumptions are there because if you want to write a model, uh, if you want to give some handy correlation between the time and fraction extracted that is the time, what is the fractional extraction or the fractional reaction versus time if you want to make a correlation, then uh, very uh, simple analytical correlation if I want to make, then I have to make some assumption that makes the expression simpler. So first assumption in the sinking core model because they usually assume some regular shape for the sake you consider a spherical particle, okay, a perfectly spherical particle, okay. Second thing is that it considered that the solid is very dense, so it does not allow the gas to penetrate through it, that is it becomes a sinking core model or the topochemical model, that is the surface reaction. So the core shrinks, if it is since it is a spherical particle, the core will shrink cons by in terms of concentric shears, so it will decrease with time, okay, that is the, uh, that is it will uh, progress in terms of cons centric spheres, some spheres is with a reducing radius, with reducing radius, right. And the sharp interface, as I said, the interface is likely to be diffused, that is it cannot be sharp because somewhere, some porosity will be there where can gas can penetrate and it will be diffuse interface, what do we mean by that? So that is suppose this is the unreacted core and uh, this is and your ash layer, this interface will be somewhat like this, it may be very diffused. This is called a diffused uh, interface, but sharp interface is this where it is perfectly sphere, concentric sphere, okay. So that is that is the assumption and it also assumes there is the fixed radius. Fixed radius means the radius does not change with time. Initially what was the radius, finally it is the same radius. Only what happens is that unreacted core shrink and over that you have a product layer is there product S layer is there such that the total radius is constant. What I want to mean is this radius, this R, here it is what and here also the same, this is also R, there is no change in this. So total radius remain constant, only thing is that unreacted core shrink with time and the S layer grow with time, right, the total. So these are the assumptions, based on this assumption we can develop the model. So kinetics of iron oxide reduction, now let us see when we understand that thing that is the sinking core model, what is that? In the same line if we thought, if we think that is the Fe2O3 a hematite spherical particle is being reduced, then what will be the situation after some time? The situation will be like this because what will happen after your, uh, the gas penetrates, what will happen if you start with a, we have started with a hematite particle. So initially it was like this, it was completely hematite and I am considering it is a dense hematite particle and after some time, so after some initial reduction with the gaseous reductant, this will be the situation. This will be the layer structure will form. What will happen basically when the reductant gas will reduce and a shell of iron will form, okay, a shell of iron will form and at the interface there will be oustite. Fex, this is called the oustite, your 
this is this is the thing the thin oustite layer oustite is usually called fexo better than you can write it as fexo because non stoichiometric compound it is not perfectly fex so fexo so this is the oustite layer so you have an iron layer iron product layer and at the interface with the oustite layer and you have two more layer one is called the magnetite layer and the hematite layer now this thing this is after some time it will form but now how it is forming that has to be seen so it is one thing is the topochemical reaction and then the reduction diffuse through the product layer then how the reaction progress once it is formed then after that reaction progress this way your reductant gas when you permeate it through this this is a porous layer ash layer there is the iron layer there is the product iron layer that is also called the ash layer it is quite porous it allows the gas to diffuse through it so after the iron layer has formed then the gas basically will diffuse through this iron layer and come to the oustite iron interface and reduce the oustite okay and how this magnetite and uh, magnetite layer forms basically this is basically you can consider uh, in both way that is there is some you can consider both way one thing is that you can think that is whatever the that is the reaction that is taking place that is the fio plus co at this interface and then what it is telling how this will form then this iron whatever is forming that is the iron ion fe fe2 plus whatever is forming here that can migrate from this layer to here and it can react with this fe basically iron can react with your these are the reaction that will take place Fe3O4 at the interface what is happening your Fe3O4, Fe3O4 can react with the iron and forming the FeO. So, this reaction can take place and without any oxygen exchange basically you are just iron will come and it can convert Fe3O4 to FeO. So, if Fe2 plus is just uh, permeate through this layer and then here this reaction can take place just that Fe3O4 Fe interface you can have this reaction and this interface so at this interface at this interface what will happen this interface so this is Fe2O3 and this iron has a diffuse there is the iron from here it can diffuse in the form of iron ion it can diffuse here and after that it can react with the Fe2O3 and forming the Fe3O4. Okay. So, this reaction can take place or it may happen also that is a reduction because if they are permeable enough that is if they are porous enough that is the Fe3O4 layer is also porous then in that case gas, gas also pass through it, gas also pass through it and can react uh, at all interface simultaneously that is also possible. But Fe ion also permeation or Fe ion diffusion is also possible because when Fe2O3 is converted to Fe3O4 there is the crystal structure change because Fe2O3 is HCP and Fe3O4 is FCC there is a change in the crystal structures okay. So, when it does then there is then volume expansion as a result you have lot of uh, uh, defects are generated within this crystal structure. And because of this defects uh, generation, there is the Fe ion diffusion also increases. So, it is not, it is likely that Fe ion can diffuse from the iron layer at the Fe3O4 Fe, inter, Fe interface and uh, this reaction can take place. And then this iron ion can also further permeate through the uh, your magnetite layer and reach the Fe2O3 Fe3O4 interface and then reduce Fe2O3 to Fe3O4. So, it is possible and also uh, this reduction at all this interfacial uh, interface the reaction can also take place by gaseous reductant also it is likely because after the Fe2O3 is converted to Fe3O4 lot of porosities are also generated that also help in permeation of the gas. So, so that is why such layer structure may also form by gaseous reaction at all interface simultaneously. So, reaction not only gaseous reaction not only at this interface, but it can react in this interface. So, what I am telling all the interface three interfaces are there that is basically your um, if I say this is basically one interface that is the FU FE interface then FE3O4 
FE interface, then you know, this is another interface, FE203, FE304 interface. So, at all this interface, gaseous reduction also can come and can reduce it simultaneously all the interfaces and it can form a this type of uh, layer structure. Okay. And then finally, this reduction of FeO2 Fe will continue by the what is that called that is your by that will continue by sinking core model that is the unreacted core this reaction will continue there is the gas will diffuse and all interface it will react and then this all this unreacted core slowly sink like this okay or gas can only react react at the FU FE interface and this layer can subsequently grow by the iron ion diffusion and reduction at the respective interfaces okay fine so these are the let us see for sinking core model what are the kinetic steps that are involved uh, there are several kinetic steps that are involved here you can see that is the gas from this you can find there is a there is a gas film also present there it will also pose some resistance for the reactant suppose we are considering this reaction that is the a gas reacting with the b solid Okay, B mole of B solid producing C mole of C solid and D mole of D gas. And in this case, we are concerned with the B, reduction of B, okay, and by the reductant A gas. So, A is the reductant gas that is coming in. So, from here you can see this is basically the concentration profile. It is the concentration, CAG is the concentration at the interface, okay, at the film bulk interface okay so from here to here there is a resistance there is the film resistance because there will be some mass transfer resistance between these two interface one is this exterior interface right this is the thing so you can find then there is a resistance the gas film there will be resistance so uh, as a result you will have from here to here there will be a drop in concentration drop in concentration because a concentration here and here concentration will drop because of gas film resistance mass transfer resistance through the gas film okay and there in the ash, ash layer you will have an equal then then also a has to diffuse through the ash layer there is also certain resistance there is the ash layer diffusion resistance so from that's why there is also a gradient and then the a reactant will reach the unreacted core surface where basically the reaction will take place. And uh, there is also a resistance because chemical reaction resistance because this concentration and final concentration is the equilibrium concentration. So, to attain that some resistance is there. So, so think is that what are the steps first transport of the reactant A through the gas film and then the diffusion of A through the ash layer and then finally the chemical reaction at the unreacted core and the ash layer interface and then your uh, chemical reaction at the interface and the desorption of the product gas that is the D that is forming and then desorption that is then transport of D uh, through the ash layer and then transport of D through the film layer and then it will come out right. So, these are the different different kinetic steps are involved first and either of these steps can control the process okay if the transport of the reactant to the gas film is rate controlling step because if it becomes if the resistance is very high in the stagnant film then that will be a uh, that can be rate controlling step when the resistance is maximum and similarly anyway resistance is maximum is the, that is the thing or if the at the interface at the uh, at the uh, at the chemical reaction chemical reaction also can be the rate controlling step and especially it happens when the temperature is low then the chemical reaction is a very slow step and that becomes a rate controlling step and as we see with the progress of time the ash layer thickness also increases so after some time there is the diffusion through the ash layer also may be the rate controlling step okay so all possible uh, 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 things are possible all possible uh, rate controlling steps are possible uh, thing is that uh, which is the uh, that you have to see that is the which is the slowest step or if uh, the resistance of all the steps are comparable then it can be a mixed control also okay fine let us first consider uh, different 
uh, red count links mechanism, right. So, first let us consider if chemical reaction as the red count link step, that is if the chemical reaction at the interface is the slow step, in that case what happens, there will be no concentration you can find, in that case CAG is equal to CAS is equal to CAC, that is there is no concentration gradient at all, because these steps that is the diffusion through the film layer, the transport through the film layer and the diffusion of wave through the ash layer are comparatively much faster compared to the chemical reaction at the interface. As a result, you can consider this concentration are equal, okay. Only you can find there is the drop in concentration, what is the surface concentration and this is suppose the equilibrium concentration. So, you have to move from here to here, okay, equilibrium concentration. So, that is the, uh, that, that is the gradient. So, chemical reaction at the chemical reaction front, there is a concentration gradient. What is the actual concentration to the equilibrium concentration? At the actual concentration at the core, that is called the CAC to the equilibrium concentration, that is called the CAE, right? So, that thing. Now, how do you write the reaction for that thing? You just see. So, this is the reaction. Suppose a mole of A. Uh, that is the reaction I said, that is the B mole of B solid is reacting forming C mole of C solid and D mole of D gas. And then what is the rate equation? Rate equation you can simply write that is from stoichiometry 1 by minus of 1 by B dn B dt because B is getting consumed is the solid that is getting reduced, okay. So, minus of dn B is the number of moles of B, n is the number of moles of B dn B dt rate of change of moles of B with time that should be negative because B is consumed and A is also consumed that is why minus of DNA, D, DNA DT, but you can find there is a to because of stoichiometry is minus of 1 by B DNB DT is equal to minus of because 1 mole of A is required to reduce B moles of capital B. So, you can write the kinetic equation like this and this should be equal to now DNA DT that is the rate of consumption of A at the reaction interface, that will be directly, that will be detected by a first order kinetics. That is the what will be the rate of consumption of A or consumption of B. So, rate of consumption of A at the interface will be defined by the first order kinetics. So, it is Ks is basically the chemical rate constant, okay. Chemical rate constant you can write it in centimeter per second and this is the concentration difference CAG minus CAE. Basically, CAG is equal to CAC. Basically, CAC minus CAE, you can write CAG minus CAE. And so, this is the first order kinetics into area. If you multiply it by the area, then it will be basically the moles per unit time, right. And then, if you consider this the NB also, you can write in this form. ND is the moles of B. You since it is a spherical, so 4 third pi R C is Q, Y C is the radius of the unreacted core, okay. R C is the radius of the unreacted core, this is this much is the R C. So, this is the volume, that is the volume 4 third pi R C cube into rho B is basically the moles of B remaining into the unreacted core at any time t. At any time t, this is the moles of B that is remaining in the unreacted core. So, d n b dt is basically 4, if you just differentiate with respect to time, it will be 4 pi r c square rho b d r c dt. And so, you replace d n b dt by this thing and then you integrate from where? Because initially the radius unreacted core radius was r and then it has shrink and at any time t it has become r c. So, it has changed uh, unreacted core initially was r, now it is r c and Initially, it was the time was 0, now at time t it has become rc. So, if you now integrate this, so now if I integrate with respect to time, then what happens? Let us see. So, if you find then you will find this relation that is t is equal to rho b, b k, c a g minus c a e r minus r c, after that you will simply get that. And now see you can calculate now total time for complete reaction, time for complete reaction when? When r c becomes 0. So, if you put R c becomes 0, then the total file time for completion tau is equal to rho b r by simply this thing because R c is 0. So, now again if you can, now you can write the relationship in this form T by tau because this is, this is, in, this is the inverse of tau. So, it is basically if you take this side T by tau is equal to left out is what? Uh, that is 1 minus R c by r and this is 
and uh, xb how you can write you can see xb 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 is basically what was the initial mass r cube that is 4 third pi r cube all this thing pi 4 third pi r cube uh, 4 third pi r cube minus r c cube by rho b this is basically initially this was the mass 4 third pi r cube rho b that was the initial mass and in the remaining mass in the unreacted code is 4 third pi r c cube rho b. So, this is basically that is the mass that has been reacted the mass that has reacted divided by the initial mass is 4 third pi r cube rho b. So, it basically give you basically 1 minus r c by r cube. So, x p is equal to 1 minus r c. So, 1 minus r c, 1 minus r c by r, 1 minus r c by r basically 1 minus x b to the power 1 third. So, that is the relation that you get. So, t by tau. So, you got a relationship now that is t by tau, t by tau is equal to 1 minus r c by r is equal to this correlation. So, so, if you plot, uh, if, if you do some experiment in the laboratory and then if you plot the reduced time versus 1 minus 1 minus x b by 1 third and it perfectly follows the straight line passing through the origin, then you can say that this is a chemical control process. Okay. So, similarly, let us see for there is the transport through the gas filling as the rate controlling step. If the uh, if the all the resistance maximum resistance lies in the transport of the gas through the film transport of the reductant a through the film okay so in that case you can find in that case what happens the you can say the major resistance there is the major resistance lies here so all the concentration drops cag to cac only in this layer right so in the film the complete concentration drops here and beyond that there is no concentration drop beyond that there is no concentration drop okay this is basically the cac is equal to cie because the chemical reaction is also fast so whatever the concentration at the undeacted core surface that is equal to the equilibrium concentration because the your chemical reaction is quite fast only resistance lies in the film also the ash layer also there is no resistance ash low resistance also very less in this case so, there is no drop. So, CAG basically to it directly comes in the film only it becomes CAS and CAS is equal to CAC because there is no. So, all the concentration drop is here. So, this is the concentration distribution and under that condition how you can develop the equation that you can see. So, again the reaction is this and the rate equation you can write now here dna dt that is the rate of consumption of a is directly proportional to that is called the because it is the it is the mass flux kg into ag at the heterogeneous interface that is here the mass transfer through a concentration boundary layer mass transfer through a concentration boundary layer is basically defined in terms of mass transfer coefficient basically it is directly proportional to the concentration difference across the cag minus cac or cae Okay, concentration difference it is directly proportional to the concentration difference and and the surface area obviously depends on the external surface area 4 pi r square and kg is the proportionality constant it is called the mass transfer coefficient. Okay. So, so basically kg into c is the mass flux through the concentration boundary layer. So, mass flux through the concentration boundary layer is defined in terms of mass transfer coefficient where mass transfer coefficient is nothing that is called the proportionality constant or the conductance and it depends on the hydrodynamic condition of the gas film. Okay. Basically, the there is a mass flux is directly proportional to the concentration difference across the film okay. and it is equal to a proportionality constant times the concentration difference and proportionality constant is called the mass transfer coefficient that physically means the conductance mass conductance to the gas film. Okay, and it depends on the hydrodynamic condition of the gas film. If the film is very turbulent or then mass transfer efficacy is very fast, then your kg is also very high. If it is stagnant, then mass transfer coefficient is very small. Okay. 
So anyway, so this is the way it is there and uh, then then mass transfer basically this is the way you can calculate the mass transfer coefficient from dimensionless correlation. It is a very well known dimensionless correlation called the range marshall correlation. This is called the range marshall correlation. Range marshall correlation is basically for spherical particle that is the and then the spherical particle that is the mass transfer uh, across the film over a spherical particle. So, that is given by the range mass cell correlation. Here you can find the Sherwood number is dimensionless mass transfer coefficient. It is correlated with Reynolds number and the Smith number. Smith number is basically a ratio of mu by rho dm basically diffusive uh, there is the uh, diffusive momentum transfer to the diffusive. Uh, what is that called mass transfer ok. So, anyway Smith number is basically a ratio of some uh, mu by rho into dm where dm is the diffusivity, mu is the viscosity, and rho is the density. So, it depends on the physical property of the material. It is also a dimensionless number Smith number and Reynolds number you know it is also a dimensionless number rho dp by mu. So, basically Sherwood number as a function of Reynolds number and Smith number are given and this type of correlations are available, several such correlations are available for different system where you can get the mass transfer coefficient at any heterogeneous interface like here it is the solid gas interface you have ok. So, similarly this type of correlations are available. So, you get it, but this is a very well known correlation for spherical system. Now, you can have this expression and then you if you integrate again. You, you, you can again NB, DNB, DT you can write in terms of DRC, DT and then you can do this integration finally you get this and here also uh, the time for complete reaction you can get where tau is equal to you can get from there because RC becomes 0. So, it is like this only. So, tau is become like this. So, and again you can finally get the relationship between time and fractional reaction this way. Uh, fractional reaction is T by tau is equal to 1 minus R C by R cube that is X p. A simple T by tau is equal to X p right and you can find this tau is directly proportional to R and chemical controlled also it was proportional to that was yeah it is proportional to R there is the diameter radius of the particle there is a time for complete reaction is proportional to the radius of the particle right. And T by tau relation is T by tau is equal to X p. If you do some experiment in the laboratory and if you plot reduced time versus fraction extracted uh, fraction fractional reaction ok. And then if it follows the straight line passing through the origin then also you can say that is the gas film that is controlling the overall reaction right. Hmm. This is the reference uh, major reference of this lecture octave Levenstuhl. The Chemical Reaction Engineering, John Williamson, Singapore 1995. This is a very good proof on sinking core model. So, you can go through this book and uh, AK Vishwas, there is a principle of blast furnace or iron making that we have used here for basically that is the, the uh, it is nicely depicted in that is the oxide reduction layer wise oxide reduction right ok. So, now come to the conclusion. In conclusion, what we have discussed so far is that first thing is that uh, iron detection can be visualized in a layer wise fashion by unreacted core model that means the reduction of iron oxide can be nicely described by the sinking core model and uh, with an unreacted core of Fe2, Fe2 O3 at the center and followed by a Fe3O4 layer there is the magnetite layer and then a thin oustite layer and beyond which there is an ash iron layer product iron layer. So, this is the way that is uh, you can do that and at any instant of time that is the reactant gas will come will diffuse through the ash layer from first from the gas film and then the ash layer and then it will react at the oustite interface and it will convert the oustite to the iron and oxygen will be entered into the gaseous phase and go away from the system. And subsequent layer formation can be done by the iron ion diffusion through the uh, magnetite layer ok, through the oustite layer to the magnetite oustite interface and then it can uh, reduce the Fe3O4 to FeO that is the oustite and then iron again 
can diffuse through the magnetite layer and reach the uh, your magnetite hematite interface and reduce the hematite to magnetite right or because in this case as I said there is the hematite reduction hematite to magnetite reduction is accompanied with the volume change as there is a lot of um, defects as a lot of pores are formed into the structure that can facilitate the iron movement iron and movement besides also we can think there is the gas also can diffuse through this product layer like uh, there is the iron layer as well as the magnetite layer and can reaches the different interfaces and at the all interfaces gas can reduce for example at the hematite magnetite interface it can reduce hematite to magnetite and then magnetite wustite interface it can reduce the magnetite to wustite and the wustite iron interface it can reduce wustite to iron so by gaseous reduction also it can take place or gaseous reduction can already take place at the wustite iron interface and then that is the iron can diffuse to the towards the core and then is subsequently reduced hematite to magnetite or magnetite to uh, oustite. So, whatever way you think about, but finally it remains a sinking core model. So, and uh, uh, in the sinking core model, we have described here the two mechanism of reduction. One is if it is chemically controlled at the interface at the unreacted core interface, it is if it is the chemical controlled, then your reduced time to the fractional extraction correlation can be given by this T by tau is equal to 1 minus RC by R or 1 minus 1 minus XB to the power 1 third or if it is gas film control that is that the uh, exterior interface is the gas film mass transfer through the gas film is the rate controlling step then the relation is simply T by tau is equal to XB and as I said. Uh, uh, your in tau obviously depends on the mass transfer coefficient and this mass transfer coefficient you can get from uh, well established correlation available in literature in terms of Sherwood number this dimensionless mass transfer coefficient that is called the Sherwood number with Smith number and Reynolds number and that is called the range Marcel correlations for the spherical particle. So, for different system or different types of correlations are available but the, for the spherical particle mass transfer uh, across the film is given by range Marcel correlation very well known correlation. So, you can use that to calculate the mass transfer coefficient and also calculate the total time for reduction if it is a gas film control ok. So, so this is the thing and the next lecture basically I will discuss if the um, transport of A there is a diffusion A, A through the product layer is the rate controlling step. So, that we will discuss in the next lecture as well as we will discuss uh, if the system is uh, mixed control that is all the resistance in the gas film uh, and the ash layer as well as at the uh, undirected code interface chemical reaction at the undirected cone interface if all are equally important that means all resistance are comparable then it can be better defined by a mixed control model that we will also discuss in the next lecture and next lecture also we will discuss two problems ok. Thank you very much.